Hello and welcome to today's discussion. We are so grateful to have uh, Secretary Adams here with us today and I'm sure that you, like me, are so excited to hear uh, some of the, the answers uh, to the questions that we're going to be asking. Uh, I am uh, pleased to say that the questions were actually uh, compiled from 4-H'ers across the state of Kentucky. And so we are really pleased that, that, that our 4-H'ers were already interested enough to know these specific things about the roles and functions of the Office of the Secretary of State in the Commonwealth. Uh, Secretary Adams is joined today by uh, President Landry Woodrum, who is our current 4-H president. I'm going to get out of the way today and I'm looking forward, as you are, to the discussion that we are going to have. Thank you so much for coming, Secretary Adams. Mr. President, my pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. I don't deserve that honor. <laughs> so our first question is just tell us a little bit about yourself. Typical interview question. And are you originally from Kentucky? They oh, wanted I, to know specifically. Oh, I certainly am. Uh, I'm from Paducah, okay. uh, McCracken County. Uh, all of my roots are in Western Kentucky, uh, McCracken County on my dad's side and Livingston County on my mom's side. Uh, my grandfather was a farmer, mm -hmm. uh, raised turkeys wow. and pigs and, and uh, cattle. And uh, my uh, grandfather uh, had a white collar job. He ran the local credit union. And that was kind of a good mix of, of different types of upbringings for me. I got to see a little of both sides of our economy. Uh, it was great. Great place uh, to grow up, McCracken County, Western Kentucky. Well, all righty. Thank you, sir. Um, could you please tell us, we're going to quiz you a little bit, about the three main purposes of the Office of the Secretary of State of Kentucky, and what is your role in each of those positions? Well, uh, until uh, the 1890s, this was an appointed position uh, by the governor. Uh, then at the time, the people who rewrote our Constitution thought this should be an independent office. Uh, they made it independent, and now it's independently elected. I'm in my first term, mm -hmm. uh, possibly only term, but we'll see, uh, but first term as Secretary of State. I've got three main responsibilities. Uh, number one, I'm literally the Secretary of the State. I'm the Chief Custodian of Records for four million people. I've got the original land records from when uh, Kentucky broke off from Virginia mm -hmm. in 1792, became an independent state. It's a while back. It's a, yeah, we've got really old stuff. We've got uh, old land records, uh, old election records, and so forth. Every time a bill uh, is sent to the governor and signed or vetoed either way, then it comes to me. Uh, in some instances, I actually sign bills into law myself. Uh, but I'm the custodian of records for all of those bills. Every time the governor issues a contract or appoints someone or issues an order, that comes to me to verify his signature and then uh, attest to it by signing next to it. I see. Uh, the next job I have is to be the chief business official of the Commonwealth. Uh, anytime a business, it can be the local pizza parlor down the street, it can be McDonald's, either mm -hmm. way, they've got to file with my office and register to do business in our state okay, and regularly file reports with our office. Right. Uh, the part of the job that uh, is the reason I ran and the part I enjoy the most and the most labor intensive part of this is to be the chief election official. Uh, so I'm the chief election official for Kentucky. Uh, my background was as an election attorney. I had a, a large national election law practice based here in Kentucky. I was counsel to the vice president. I was counsel to several national committees. I did elections in all 50 states mm -hmm. uh, multiple times. And that was good training for me, especially being the rookie on the field with the pandemic election uh, to have to yeah. run. I was able to draw on a lot of things I'd seen in other states that I thought would fit well into our system. Speaking of election law, Kentucky passed some election law reforms recently. Uh, could you please explain what those were and how they're going to affect the future of elections in our Commonwealth? Well, the election code that I inherited when I was sworn in last year was written in 1891. So ways back. Think about that for a moment. Before cars, yeah. before electricity, uh -huh. we had the Kentucky Election Code. We were long overdue for a reassessment. Uh, the reason that we have a legislature, the reason it exists, is so that once a year they can come into town for a couple of months and modernize our laws, modernize our legal system, mm -hmm. and we really hadn't done that with our elections. We had uh, an out-of-date, anachronistic code, and it didn't really reflect how people lived their lives. Uh, 
to me was important when I ran for this office and then once I got here to try to modernize our system. Uh, so we made a number of really important changes. The biggest one of those is early voting. Mm -hmm. It's a little arbitrary to say, sure, you can come vote, but you got to do it on a Tuesday in this right. limited span of time. Yeah. That's arbitrary. It's foolish. Mm -hmm. If you want to increase turnout like I do, and if you think the in-person voting is the gold standard as I do, let's have more of it. Right. Uh, so we quadrupled the number of days to go vote from one day to four. Mm -hmm. The Thursday, Friday, Saturday before Election Day will now be voting days also. Okay. Wow. All right. Those are some pretty extensive reforms. And what year did you say the code was written? Prior 1891. To yeah, that's quite the record. Maybe we won't wait that long next time. We've done more to modernize our elections in 16 months than had been done the prior 130 years. I'm really proud of that. That's pretty impressive, sir. So another renovation has been the Secretary of State website. Uh, do you have any online tools that you want to tell our young people about? We believe in making this as easy as possible mm -hmm. for as many people as possible. If you want to start a business, you can come to our website, sos.ky.gov, and everything you need is right there. If you want to vote, if you want to register to vote, if you want to apply for an absentee ballot, maybe you're a student who doesn't live where you doesn't uh, vote and uh, reside where you go to college. Let's, I was one of those people too. There we are. Let's say you're going to college at UK, but you vote in Paducah. Well, mm -hmm. great. You can go to our website sos.ky.gov, you get all the tools that you need that facilitate you with registering to vote, with actually getting your ballot, with starting a business, it's all online. I see. That's, that's pretty impressive as well, Secretary. What are some of the positions in your office other than yourself, and what are their duties? Well, I've got a staff of about 30. Uh, seven of those people are political appointees that I got to personally select. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix. We've got several people who work on business filings, uh, people who regulate public notaries. Mm -hmm. We handle all of that. Okay. Obviously, we've got election staffers uh, as well. We've got a few positions that are statutory, positions that I've been told by the legislature to fill. And then I get to appoint several uh, special assistants, a communications director, a field representative, a uh, secretary, and so forth. Okay, so you have a pretty good amount of control over who works in your office. Well, uh, the way that government works in Kentucky and uh -huh. the executive branch is you've got you've got our seven elected officials, statewide elected yes. officials. They get to pick some proportion of people, usually roughly 10% of their staff or political appointees are accountable, and the rest are civil service that I don't really have much power to regulate or hire or fire. So you'll be gone before they're gone. Oh, probably. long gone. Yeah, yeah. I see. They were there before I was born, and they'll be there after I'm gone. Uh, asking for a friend here, are mm -hmm. there any intern positions in your office? Uh, we do hire uh, once a year a legal intern. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of laws that we deal with, sometimes mm -hmm. writing them, sometimes applying them, uh, and we frequently get sued. It's nothing personal, but anytime there's a ballot challenge to knock someone off the ballot in an election, right. uh, we get sued, and we have to participate wow. in that lawsuit. So I need all the legal help I can get. I'm a lawyer, but I can't do this stuff all day, every day. Right. Uh, so we do hire a law student uh, every summer as a legal intern to assist us with research and writing. Okay, well, I'm an agriculture student, so maybe I don't fit in quite there, but I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can make it in Frankfurt. Um, you mentioned going to school earlier. What is your educational background? Where did you go to school? What did you study and did you enjoy it? Well, uh, I was fortunate to be the first in my family to go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to another school down the road about 90 miles that will remain nameless. Ah. Uh, but I, I'm a proud U of L grad. Uh, I was a scholarship recipient there. Uh, that made it possible for me to go to college, right. which wasn't always yeah, a, right a sure yeah. thing. Uh, I did well enough there to get into Harvard Law School. I went there Impressive. on low-income aid. Uh, and so that was a really, uh, really good experience on both of those uh, sides, uh, being able to stay in Kentucky for part of that and then getting the perspective of an outsider also right. has been helpful to me. Yeah. One of our 4-H'ers, one of our members, anywhere from 9 to 18, so we don't know how old this young person was, but they noticed that the seal of the office of the Secretary of State is different than the seal of the Commonwealth. Is that true, and are they used at different times? Uh, yeah, both exist by statute. Uh, one of the jobs I have uh, in, in our laws is to be the custodian of the state seal. So one of the jobs I have is to, is to police the use of that seal, make sure it's not being used for commercial purposes or improper wow. purposes. People aren't counterfeiting it to use on their political mailers and so forth. So that's one more uh, service that we offer. I've got my own seal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for my own. It's actually right here on my yeah, I know. Uh, I wonder what pen. that was. Yeah. So this goes on my uh, executive orders and so forth. I see. Okay. And so they are different. We're they confirming are. that for our young person. Yeah, this okay. this is an eagle. It's a, it's it's much different than the two guys. The shaking two guys hands. shaking hands. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, what would you like to say to the 4-H members in Kentucky about the importance of civic engagement and public service? 
And uh, what would you like to see them do as they go forward? So like I mentioned earlier, they're 9 to 18. So there's a lot of range on what they can get done in the rest of their 4-H career. Well, obviously, if you can register to vote, then you should do that. But you don't have to wait until then to get involved. Uh, I was running campaigns professionally before I was old enough to vote. Uh, you can volunteer, find someone that you believe in, and go work and help that person get elected. It makes a big difference. You actually have a great deal more influence at the local level in a local race mm -hmm. than you do volunteering for a presidential or a senate or a governor campaign. Uh, so have at it. Maybe you care about the school board. Maybe as a student, you feel directly invested in their decisions. Go find someone you support or oppose and get involved in that campaign uh, for the school board. Uh, Ronald Reagan, who was president when I was a little boy, said that freedom is only one generation away from extinction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very true. Uh, it's only possible for us to keep our system functioning if young people uh, take lessons uh, from older people and learn how to play a role, how to be informed citizens and participate. And so uh, I got involved as a very young person. I encourage you to do the same. Wonderful. Great advice. Thank My you, pleasure. sir. So I've asked you plenty of questions. Do you have any questions for me about Kentucky 4-H or the program? Tell me what you can about what we can work together on in terms of civic education for our young people. Well. Our state specialist, Mr. Chuck Stamper, rather Dr. Chuck Stamper, excuse me, uh, is in charge of citizenship programming in the state of Kentucky. So in his position, he runs several conferences for youth ages 9 to 18 to participate and learn about how to get involved in government, especially their communities. So I actually underwent one of his programs. It's called Issues Conference. Issues Conference is held at our leadership center in Jabez, and there young people are assigned an action group where they take a particular subject like drug use among teenagers or uh, mental health with teenagers, and they make a plan and then pretend to apply to a fiscal court for funding, a county fiscal court. We would love to have your department be a part of that program. Oh, Maybe have happy to. you come down and speak, uh, send somebody from the department to come down, do trainings on you know, public policy, all that stuff. These kids are extremely interested in getting involved in their communities, and we have several apply for grants every year from the state, and some even go on to actually work with their county fiscal courts. So we think you can make a huge impact there, and we'd, we'd love to see it. You bet. Great, Secretary yeah. Adams. Sounds good. Get me in. Thank you so thank much you, for talking Andrew, to me. My pleasure. Appreciate it, sir. You bet. Secretary Adams, we do thank you. And so are there any other comments uh, that you would like to make to the Kentucky 4-H'ers? I would just say get involved. It doesn't have to be politics. That's okay. Uh, find something that you care about. Maybe it's homelessness. Maybe it's literacy. It could be anything. Uh, you know, the government is just sort of the tip of society. Beneath that is civil society. And that's where real change happens. Our places of worship, mm -hmm. our private organizations like 4-H, that's where real change happens. That's where relationships are built. So you can achieve just as much as we have here in the government or much more even in the private sector and the nonprofit sector. Awesome, thank you. I just got chills, uh, you know. So, so that leads me to, to reiterate, get involved. Remember our 4-H motto is to make the best better. And so we live in the best commonwealth in the United States and it's up to us to continue to make it better. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.